All right, guys, I am back, and I wanted to show you the setup here with our uh, RGB nodes, the regular dumb nodes. A couple, of, uh, One of you guys has asked for a set of green, which I had. I'm happy to send them out to you. Uh, like I said, I'm sorry about the... Um, the missing missing the color wires because it makes it so much easier to hook them up whenever you have the wires that are matching the color of the node that you're connecting to the board but I at least wanted to show you these specific with these little uh, with these little connectors here Ray actually sent these to me over the summer and I'll include these with uh, with uh, your orders just so that you have them because uh, you know I want you to have something to connect to the controllers and uh, in this manner you don't have to really uh, uh, come up with a connector to just play with the controller and use it so what I'm gonna do is uh, what I've already done is uh, just like in the uh, pixel controller uh, video I uh, have daisy chained all of these controllers together now um, I What's going to happen, uh, well, what happened whenever I ordered from Ray? This is how Ray sends them, and, they're, and it was simply wrapped in some bubble wrap, and it's in this little Ziploc baggie. But I want to do a little bit better uh, job at showing you what the controller looks like, how to actually hook it up. So um, I, I'll send the baggies out, too, if you really want them. And, but what I want you to notice here is, uh, and I'll try to fix it so that you can actually read it, Let's turn it this way. On the back side of the board, it, well, first of all, y you've, you've seen the other, uh, the other videos that um, have, uh, or, it's a little better, uh, you've seen some of the other videos. This is the dip switch setting, and um, what I did was I set the dip switch setting to uh, number, on the other ones, I set them to number 10 and number 9. I think that gives a nice little mix. Uh, Ray sends them out, I don't know why, with number 8 and 9 turned on. So I'm just going to turn that on just like that. And this gives a good, a nice little flow to, uh, or it should give a nice flow to the test pattern on this board so that you can use it as a, uh, to test your RGBs. But um, something I didn't do in the other video that I'll do here is, sorry about shaking the camera there. Um, let's see if I can zoom in a little bit, not zoom in, but there's actually writing on the other side of the board here where... And you can see the camera. There we go. That's a little better. On the left side of the on the left side of the board, you can see where my thumb is here. You can see a D negative and a D positive. That means the other side of this board, this is where the data negative or neutral and the data positive enter into the board. Moving up, we have the ground, another ground, and we have a 9 to 24 volt line. So if I turn this over quickly and show you this you're gonna see this part of the board here this is my ground this is my power and then these are my data inputs my data negative data positive in the middle and then uh, data ground now we'll flip it over and then you can see and this is the side that down here on the table is facing you you have Remember what I said, the data was, or the power was here. So this power, this long power strip all, comes all the way up here. It says common plus. That means that's your positive wire throughout your RGBs. And then you have the R, the G, and the B neutral lines or negative lines. R, of course, is red, green, and blue. So on, when you're connecting up your pixels, you're going to notice that you're going to put your neutral line into, or your positive line, I'm sorry, into the left, then you're going to go from left to right here, R, G, and B. Now, that's all fine and good, but whenever it comes to actually plugging in to these little pigtails, you have to make sure that the connections match the connections that are actually on your RGB nodes. So, just like the other controller, I'll bring these in and try to get a little closer look. There you can see very clearly, oh, I need a pointer. Here you can see pretty clearly, I'll try to focus a little better. That looks pretty good. And 
here you see a little chip right there, another chip right there, and another chip right there. You'll notice there's a space, and you can even see this little plus sign or positive sign. That stands for the positive flow of electric with a 12 volt power line. On to the very immediate left, it's hard to see in this window, but this one clearly says that this is the red line. It has a little R marked above it. Then this one here says B for, uh, uh, I'm sorry, this one says G for green, and then the one on the right is blue. Now, if we go to the next pixel, you'll notice the one side by side to it, right beside it, you have two of these little uh, spots, these little resistors or whatever, and then you have a blank spot, and then you have a single resistor. Well, this is the this is the mirror opposite of this. So, in other words, if I take this pixel and spin it around, you'll notice that they look similar. So, this is the front, and this is the back. And this is the back here. So, anytime you have two of these little resistors or, or transistors, I don't even know what these are called, but anytime you have two of these side by side, you know that the inside one is always going to be the green, uh, or the, uh, the green line, or the green RGB. This left one is always going to be to your blue one, not the left one, but the one to the left of this middle one. If you have a neutral, uh, an empty spot, that's going to be your positive 12 volt. And if you have one by itself, that's always going to be your red. So you can get used to, in either these white sets or these green sets over here, you can get used to the fact that these are actually going to be in the order of red, positive, green, blue, RGB. Or, if you're looking at it the other way, G, B, positive, and R. So with that in mind, I had taken the time to find the opposite of each of these, and I guess I'll zoom in here, or not zoom in, but clear it up here, to find out what this first node was. If I plug in this, if I plug this into here, I took the time to find out that to the left here is the blue, the next to the left is the green, then we have the blank space for the 12 volt, and then we have finally our red line. So we need to make sure that when we connect these to our controllers that this one here is going to the red, this one here this, the one on the right is the red, the neutral, the green, and the blue. Now, I have these upside down, and I have them upside down for a reason. When I connect them, I need to make sure that this is the red, the positive, the green, the blue. So this one needs to go to the red. So it does, right there. This one needs to go, if I, the middle one here, the, the one on the second to the right, if I flip it over, second to the left now is actually going to the positive 12 volt. This one here needs to be going to the green, and if I flip it over, it is going to the green, and the far left one here needs to be going to the far right one, which is your blue. So once I verify that I've had them all hooked up, that's the next step in the process, is to take these one by one, and, oh, that one don't fit that way. We'll have to plug this one over here. Now, the nice thing about RGB dumb nodes is that it doesn't take, it doesn't matter which side you hook up. When Ray sends out a, an, an order of 100 RGB dumb nodes, there is a male and a female connector. And then sometimes he'll throw in the box a couple extra connectors. Now, over the summer last year, I purchased quite a few of these, probably about a, a 2,000 dumb RGB nodes. They're my favorite ones to use. They're very simple. They have the fewest problems. But uh, one of the nice things about them is the fact that they, 
they are they are very durable. They last a long time, and they have the fewest failure rates that uh, that most RGBs might uh, uh, that RGBs might have. And uh, as as far as being pixels, I think I can count on one hand how many failure uh, dumb nodes I've had, and and that says a lot. So I'm just connecting these up. I think I need I have two more two more sets to go. We may have to skip one if I have the wrong connector hooked up. Nope, we're all good. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, so. We've got all of our RGBs hooked up, and this is live, so if I screw this up, I'm going to look like a fool on camera. I'm going to make sure my power is off, plug in my power supply, one of my converted power supplies that I got for free, and added these uh, fancy schmancy things, and I'm going to turn it on. And there we go. It looks like, uh, looks like all of our RGBs are working, and... Um, one thing that I'll point out, and that's really, really bright. I mean, I've got 450 dumb nodes in a this this small area. Let me uh, change the chase pattern on some of these to oh, let's go with number four. I'll turn off the number nine and go to number four. And now you can see that that's going to slow it down just a little bit. So there's number four. Turn off number nine and go to four. Number four. There we go. Oop, I turned number two on that one. That really slowed it down so that you can actually cycle through all the colors. There's, there's actually six or seven, I think seven different colors that it cycles through in this mode. And um, as you can see, all of your RGBs that are ordered are working just fine. And I'm going to let these burn in so that if there's a problem with any of them, I'll cut them out and make sure you get good ones. But uh, but like I said, I'm, I plan on, here, and we're going to turn it off. All turned off. We'll start it up and let it recycle. So now they'll all flash in unison. They'll all be the same. But uh, pretty much, there's your. Uh, there is the RGB uh, dumb controllers. And uh, while I have you here, I um, I want to point out there's also this option from Ray. This is the 27 channel controller, and it would operate exactly the same as these little guys right here. In fact, they look very similar. Um, but the only difference is is these controllers here have a maximum amp of uh, a maximum of two amps per channel, so that that's quite a few more nodes. Uh, two amps per channel. This is only 15 amps per board total, one amp per channel maximum. So uh, the difference between this one and this is you can do a whole lot more dumb nodes with one controller here, or you can do fewer dumb nodes. Maybe you could do an arch section, nine channel arch, or you could do, uh, like I use this for uh, my, uh, my mega arch, which had, each channel had about 20 to 40 RGBs per channel. I used up, there was six of them, so one, two, three, four, five, six of these. And uh, I used this, and then I used the other three for something else. So, um, just something for you to think about. Okay, guys, I hope this is helpful. I hope I haven't rambled too much. But uh, I'm going to let these burn in, and uh, I plan on shipping them out on Tuesday. So uh, once again, please leave any questions you have. Uh, I, I, you know, let me know if there's anything else that that I can do for you as far as if you have any questions. Okay. All right. Take care, guys.